Whether you're just now getting into electronic design or you've been doing it for years, you know how often ceramic capacitors are used in circuits. They're used for general decoupling, filtering on the input and output side of buck converters, they're the standard capacitor type in the majority of RC time circuits, and they're used as DC blocking capacitors in mainly audio applications. It's pretty easy to see why they're used in so many different applications, especially when you directly compare them to other capacitor technologies. They're really small, they have incredibly low parasitics, mainly ESR and ESL, which is the equivalent series resistance and equivalent series inductance, respectively. They're non-polarized, and they have a much longer lifespan, especially when you compare them to electrolytics. But of course, as is the case with pretty much everything in electronics design, there is a trade-off. The issue is one of ceramic capacitors' biggest drawbacks is really misunderstood or completely unknown to many people. This drawback is going to be the focus of this video and it's called the DC bias effect. This primarily affects class two capacitors, which are those that have a temperature characteristic that starts with an X, Y, or a Z, for example, an X7R or an X5R. Class 1s, on the other hand, they typically start with a C, H, or a P. A common example is a COG. These are normally used for tuned circuits like oscillators or crystals. Class 2 ceramics, so the X7R, X5Rs, are by far the most commonly used capacitor, and I'm only going to focus on them in this video since, again, they really suffer from this issue. The DC bias phenomenon occurs whenever a DC voltage is applied across a capacitor. The capacitance decreases as the voltage increases, and this decrease can be really dramatic with some capacitors showing over an 80% decrease in capacitance while still being within the voltage rating of the capacitor. The fact that the capacitance can decrease so much when it is still being used within the rated operating voltage of the capacitor is why so many people get into trouble. It's not enough to just derate the voltage by 50% or so and call it a day. This is compounded by the fact that going to an X7R capacitor isn't going to solve it. They do typically perform a little bit better than X5Rs, but it is absolutely still an issue. So now that I've outlined what the issue is, what real world impact does this have on our circuits? Well, fortunately, for general purpose decoupling, even with the decreased capacitance, it normally won't cause a huge issue, especially when run at the lower voltages that most ICs are run at. But when building an RC circuit, you can't design it around its nominal capacitance. Instead, you need to use the effective capacitance of it which depends on the DC voltage. Another big issue is when you're designing a buck converter, both the input and output ceramics will be less effective than their nominal capacitance would lead you to believe. This especially affects the input side since it has a higher voltage. This gets further compounded by the fact that most data sheets are really ambiguous on if the required capacitance is nominal or effective. If you have too small of input capacitance, it can cause the buck converter to have excessive EM emissions, fail EMC testing, or just not work. So now that we know what DC bias is and what issues it can cause, what should we do? Well, I wish I could just give you a simple rule of thumb to derate a capacitor by a certain amount or something like that. It's usually not that simple, but there are a few things to keep in mind. First, the smaller the package size, the worse they will be affected. Next, while increasing the rated voltage and using X7Rs does tend to improve the issue, it will not eliminate it. I'm also a really big proponent of using the largest capacitance possible for any given package size when using ceramics for decoupling. This will usually help the DC bias issue as well as many other issues. Finally, since most ceramic capacitor data sheets don't list the DC bias of their capacitors for who knows why, you really should learn how to use Murata's SIM surfing tool. SIM surfing is honestly the best, the greatest tool that I've ever seen that's provided by a manufacturer. 
it lets you sort capacitors by effective capacitance based on the DC voltage applied. You can then see plots of any parameter you would ever want to for a capacitor. You can then export out a spice net list or an S parameter of that capacitor. Again, this is at a given DC voltage and temperature, and it lets you then simulate your circuit using a model that actually is taking into account both the DC bias and temperature. So to wrap things up, ceramic capacitors are incredibly useful and they absolutely are a great replacement for a lot of other capacitor technologies, but you need to understand that they come with a big trap if you're not paying attention. The DC bias phenomenon can greatly decrease the amount of capacitance that a capacitor has. So if you use SimSurfing or another tool like that, it's really easy to determine what the actual capacitance will be and use that value to simulate for your circuit.